recording okay so now um, let's go into and uh, understand the basics of android studio what is android studio how we use and the initial basic first program we will be developing using android studio okay now uh, once you start android studio for the very first time do remember that android studio will do some background installation again okay so the first time you run android studio you will be uh, dependent on something called uh, background installations so you will have to again wait once the installation is complete then you can start working with it okay so uh, it shows me close new tip let me close this and let me come back to file new new project okay um, in fact let me just close this project there we go and now we have this window called new project okay so for the first time uh, you run you will be brought to this particular window if you have already not run it multiple times okay so once you first time execute it this is the basic window where we create new applications from here you can see it says phone and tablet wear os um, for mobile, uh, what we call smart watches android tv based applications or automobile based applications that uh, come up in your automobiles in cars we know that nowadays we have android phones uh, android displays in cars as well okay so um, this is where basically mostly we will be doing we will be working primarily with phone applets now your task is to develop various different applications using uh, android studio and it gives you the starting point basically this is the starting point that it's already there uh, some basic activities some basic information is there all you is you can start using this so for example you want to create an app that has a settings kind of a look in which there are multiple settings um, just like we have in uh, any android you can start from here but <laughs> Excuse me. See, so um, इसी तरीके से हम आगे जब बढ़ेंगे तो basically you will find that um, there are multiple different activities that you can use. आप map बना रहे हैं चाहे full screen activity चाहिए, bottom navigation चाहिए, um, anti composite activities आपको चाहिए या whatever you want to work with. ठीक है. So the first or usually we do is we either go with an empty activity or we start with the basic activity. Empty में क्या होगा कि कुछ भी नहीं होगा. Blank. Absolutely nothing is involved here. When we go with the basic activities, उसमें basic एक button और एक आदि operation by default बनाया होगा ताकि आप वहाँ से continue करें. So at certain times we go with the blank. At certain times we will start with basic activity. Okay. So ये आपसे मैंने empty activity पे फ़िलहाल click कर दिया. So as soon as I click on it और ये click next, तो आपसे पूछेगा कि भाई आप जो activity अब आप application बनाने जा रहे हैं, अब आप mobile app बनाने जा रहे हैं, तो आपके basic mobile app क्या कहलाएगी? ठीक है. So what I do is I said okay. Uh, this will be my BSIT uh, app underscore one. ठीक है underscore hello h e double l h e double l o hello w o r l d world. Okay, so this is now my first app name. Okay, uh, BSIT app one hello world. ये मेरी application का नाम हो गया. This will be my app name that will be displayed even when I install my Android. Phone uh, device. Oh, sorry. When I install my Android app, the name of the app on my Android will be this name. So we be be careful. This time I'm just giving it as a temporary name. Take. I may talk a little bit about it. But properly, when we make our applications, the name must be given. It is necessary. Start with the correct name. It is necessary. So that then you don't have any problem in the future. Otherwise, the name will be dependent on the name. So the name will be changed. So the name will be changed. So the name will be changed. Then you would find that it automatically creates a package for you. Com. dot example. dot bsit app one hello world. Okay. Now this is an example package. We will talk more about this package later on. How we need to change it or what other packages we can use instead of this word example, so that we can deploy the application online uh, when we go on to Play Store. But for now, uh, we use example. No problem. We'll, as I said, don't confuse with that. When you need to deploy your app on Play Store, basically we recommend that you change this package name, okay? Uh, because every app in the world will have example. It creates conflicts, and uh, Google says, "Don't use this word. Give your own, con um, you know, customized name." So, but for now, just you leave it to default. Don't do anything. Save your location. Where do you want to save your project? That's again very important. Where your project needs to be installed. 
in my case, I will say, okay, go inside the D drive. Inside D drive, let me create a folder. A and D are O I D Android apps class. Okay, inside this Android apps class, I will create this folder and save it. Okay, usually I don't save it in C drive, um, my own wish. Okay, you can save it anywhere, leave it to a default line. Don't worry about that. So this is a location. Now here, which language you want to work with? Um, like I've said, basically we will be doing Java because we have already studied Java. So it's more comfortable. However, if you want to do Kotlin or Kotlin, you can do it This is basically Google's own customized language. You can use that as well. We prefer to use Java. It's more um, easy, in other words, and it has more larger, what we call community. So when you search online, you can easily find lots of tutorials on Java easily. So when you get confused, if you don't understand anything, if you want to do anything online, basically this is where it comes in. It has a larger community, in other words. Right? So we recommend going for Java. And since you have already done that in previous class, it becomes considerably easy as well. Second thing is the most essential. Which SDK you want to use for your development? Okay. Do you want to use Android 5.0 Lollipop? If you want to use latest versions or previous older versions. Now, what happens here is that if you choose, for example, default Lollipop Android 5.21 version of the API, it says that your app will approximately run on 94% of current devices. This basically means that once you use this software API, basically you means that Android version is You are using this particular version of Android. Now, jitne bhi dunya mein phones hain, jo is version ko support karte hain, unke upar aapki application chale pai. Those mobile phones who do not support the particular version will not be able or might not be able to run the current app. So you need to be careful. If you are developing an application for a company that needs to ensure that the app is run on multiple devices across the board. So you, it has to be that particular thing. So don't go and try to use the latest version because if you do, you will see that only 39 to 40% applications, uh, mobile phones are compatible currently with uh, API 28 or what we call the 9.5 version. Okay, so entire world only 40% people will be able to use it out of 100, which is a very limited market now. So you're reducing your chances of your app being used by lots of people. So that's why we go for certain older versions which are at maximum level. Okay, so in my case, I will be using API 21 Android 5.0 Lollipop version. That's what I've installed, and sometimes we go even back, but I'm using that. Okay. If you want to uh, target even older versions, you can go for uh, Android Jelly Bean as well. Now you see it says 99.8%. So the older phones who do not get updated will still also be able to run your applications. For me, I have go from Lollipop 5.0 forward. That's my choice. For you also, I recommend initially at the development level, we work with five. Then when we start with developing professional applications, you just need to be aware that which API is more suitable for your larger audience. Okay. Then we click on finish. So basically this is just a new project window. We don't spend that much time here. You just give it a name, let everything be default. If you want to change location, change it, make sure you select Java language and I leave the API to 21 as my default API. Okay. So we just give it the basic uh, operations. Then we come here and click on uh, finish, but it gives me a warning here. Project location should not contain white spaces. Okay. Okay. So what I do is I remove the white spaces from here. Okay. Because uh, this location will be used as your API path. So it is said that, uh, do not save it here. D is not writable. Please choose a different location. Uh oh. Let me create a new folder. And the R O I D Android app class without the spaces. Uh -huh. In here. This one. Slash. Let me copy the folder name. Now it's okay. Finally. Okay. So uh, again, one more tip. 
do ensure that you don't give spaces in your folder name even in folder name even in your app name it's not recommended that you should not have spaces because then that same name will be used as an api package names and for path name if it includes spaces it creates problem like it just did okay so let's go finish what it will do it will go and build your basic project for you okay and now you can see it says loading bsit app one hello world android it is developing what i refer to as my uh, basic activity or main activity and then this is something called my So it's activity main XML and main activity dot Java files. Two files are created and my window here is still loading. So I need to wait. Okay. As you can see at the bottom, it says Gradle build is working. So it's still building my project. So be patient with Android. Do not try to hurry. Or do not try to be confused with it. Now, meanwhile, it loads. What I will do is I will try to uh, explain a little bit about the Android window. So now, once you open the Android window, the first thing you see is your coding area. It has two main files. One is called your activity main.xml. One is called main activity dot Java. Now your entire user interface we develop using something called XML within Android Studio. Your entire UI is basically developed using XML components, XML text. The actual logic behind the operational activities, events, management of data is done through java so technically you would be using two different languages one thing called xml one thing called java using xml we say that we design the android using java we control the design we provide the controlling events data processing and all the basic operations i will show you how you do that so there are two files for that particular purpose okay. on the right side you will see uh, sorry on the left you will see this uh, project window this is very again important area where we all your folder structure is formed, okay? And it's currently loading, forming, like I said, it will, it does take a time. It will, when you create a new project for every new project, it will download or not download. In other words, from it, its own local repository, it will create an APIs and download the copy paste the APIs into new folder. So you can see this, it's importing new files from its own repository and adding it into your Android project so that your Android project can run independently. Okay, that's the basic idea for it. Ah, finally. Okay, so give it a time, be patient with it. It takes a few minutes, sometimes uh, depending on the PC and everything. Uh, but like I said, it just took a few minutes for me as well to install um, and basically um, run the Android system. So now you get a better view of what we have. So this is our project window area where all our project window settings are located. And the basic information we have available here. Uh, we use this area to navigate between various different files and which file you are working on. Remember, by default, you get two files. One is XML where we design our UI and Java file, main activity Java file where we provide the control and functions with that. On the middle area, you would find within if you use activity main XML file, this is where our design comes into play. Okay. So all the components are here. So using Android studio, it's as uh, simple as to a certain point, dragging and drop. Unlike Java, unlike, um, if I use HTML or CSS word or PHP, where we have to use programming from A to Z. Android make out that KRS make coffee at the already when I mean, okay. All you need to do is you need to understand the basic flow and basic uh, structure of how Android is working. So what I'm going to explain to you. Bas. Okay. After that, you can do a lot of work. Now, what is it? That you have in Android Studio, ke andar, we have these palettes in which already components are created. All these text fields, different type of text fields, buttons, different types of buttons, widgets, different types of widgets, layouts, different types of layouts, containers, helpers, Google-based things, legacy things, all these things are already there. All we need to do is drag and drop them. Components are created. When we drag and drop them, the basic XML for there is automatically created. See, 
that's the logic of it that we don't have to work with xml that's why we majorly focus on java so that we provide the control based on what we are trying to do so this is our main design area the final app look and the component look when we design a component it's um, this is a like final layout and the structure of the components are here we will explain and go into the difference between as we put more components here here is your component tree okay so android is referring to each of these as your components so your text field is a component your button is a component your image is a component all these are your components you place these components here or you place these components here and their structure and hierarchy is basically shown here that how you have nested those components you can place a component within a component for example a container within a container or you can apply various different layouts inside a container okay uh, like i said we will be working this in future classes so don't worry about that so we will be using this containers we will be using this layout we will be using this to create the buttons we will be using this project window to navigate between multiple files multiple windows that we will be creating so do ensure that you make yourself familiar with it then one other thing that we had already discussed uh hang on hang on okay um something called avd okay android um simulator that we use so i will talk about this in a moment so this is our basic window or basic gui of uh, what we call android studio let's just start building first app so if i come here very quickly i click on hello world this is the default component or what we call text view already created for us so if i go inside the text here you would find that various different text components are there in me se hum koi bhi bana sakte what we do is we can create a plain text we create a text view password email and so on so forth theek hai what i said okay i need this text view component so humne text view component bana diya As soon as I drag, you notice that उसके अंदर जो है ना ये जंजीरें बनकर आ रही हैं. These are known as constraints. We will talk about these constraints in next class. But what primarily these constraints are that they are here to fix your components. कि वो component कहाँ पे कैसे नजर आ रहे हैं. ठीक है. जब हम ये component बना लेते हैं. Let me bring this window here. तो जब हम कंपोनेंट बना लेते हैं तो इस कंपोनेंट की फिर सेटिंग्स हम यहाँ पर टेम्पर करते हैं सो व्हेन वी हैव द कंपोनेंट अवेलेबल मैंने कंपोनेंट क्रिएट कर दिया इफ आई डिलीट दिस कंपोनेंट इट्स डिलीटेड सॉरी इफ आई कम हियर राइट क्लिक एंड आई कैन से क्लियर कंस्ट्रेंट कप कॉपी डिलीट द कम्पोनेंट कंपोनेंट डिलीट हो गया इन ऑर्डर टू रिक्रिएट इट आई विल कम इन साइड दैलेट विंडो टेक्सट व्यू क्लिक एंड ड्रैग एंड ड्रॉप इट हेयर मेरा कंपोनेंट क्रिएट हो गया अब मुझे इस कंपोनेंट के साथ कुछ सेटिंग्स करनी है फ़ॉन्ट साइज़ बड़ा करना है फॉर्मेशन करनी है उसके लिए हम यहाँ पर आ जाएंगे एट्रीब्यूट्स विंडो के अंदर विद इन दिस एट्रीब्यूट्स विंडो वी हैव मल्टीपल डिफरेंट ऑप्शंस दैट अलाउज टू कंट्रोल द कंपोनेंट्स स्ट्रक्चर फॉर एग्जाम्पल इट्स कंस्ट्रेंट्स नाउ कंस्ट्रेंट्स इज बेसिकली डिपेंडेंट ऑन लेआउट लेआउट मीन्स की आपकी ऐप का लेआउट क्या होगा हाउ विल द कम्पोनेंट्स बी ऑर्गेनाइज ऑन योर विंडो ऑन योर मोबाइल स्क्रीन that's considered as a layout there are various different layouts we will be talking about them as we go along by default now it uses constraint layout in our latest android 2021 version constraint means that we specify manually the this object is which um, constraint to what constraint ka basic matlab hota hai um we bind something to something else so um, this hand is constrained to this so wherever this hand goes this hand will follow uh it's is like that so we when we constrain for example uh one pen with another so now this basically means that this is my main constraint or this pen has been constrained to this so now wherever this pen goes this pen will also follow because it has been constrained technically there is no physical connection this is separate this is separate but we use the constraint algorithm to constrain an object virtually with one object to another so wherever this object flows the second follow independent of its physical connection why well, i hope it explains a little bit so this is what happens so now this window is basically constrained from left side from right side this basically means that i have constrained my component from left to right okay and because i have done left so initially it went to left then right so right 
So now I have a left to right constraint from both sides. So my component will remain at the center of screen because half constraint is there, half constraint is there. As simple. Okay. So this is basically where we set these constraints. I could have clicked on these plus buttons also to set the constraint. Similarly, uh, what I do is if I come down here, you would find there are lots of different attributes. For example, text view. So I can say BSIT app one, hello world. I, I give it my own name. Okay. I can remove these underscores. So this text is basically your text field name as okay. So this where's I, what I can do. Similarly, you can come into this split window button here at the top right corner. If you can see this here, you will find the XML code for this thing. Okay. So this is the XML code that was auto generated for this particular text field. We can write our own code here as well. So for example, I can come here. And I can write uh, text size. Okay. And I can give it, for example, 20. And this can be um, SP. Okay. So you can see the text size has increased. For example, if I give it 25, it becomes even more. I can give it, for example, 45. So now it becomes even more. Too large to be broken up. So I will just give it 20 size. Okay. Now, 20 size SP stands for what we call um, SP ka short form tha. Scale independent, yes. Because we have different screen sizes. Uh, every mobile phone has a different screen size. So normally, text ke andar ya to word jav kaam karte hain. So word ke andar hum DP, uh, points use karte hain. 12 size, 13, 14 size, 15 size. Applications on pixel based content. In Android, we use different terminology because in Android, the pixel size is not important. The screen size matters. And every other device is a different screen size. So they have used with a, a unique unit called SP, which is scale independent, which basically means that it doesn't matter what your screen size is. It will automatically adjust to that particular percentage ratio of your screen. Okay. So if I use, for example, 20, it becomes like a 20 size. But this is scale independent. Okay. So, or in other words, screen independent. So, here what I did, I ed edited the code. I just used text size is equal to 20 SP. I can use different uh, formations for that as well. We will get into the coding later on. So, my code is almost ready. So, I close the split window. I go back into the design view. I can create a button here as well. So, I come here into buttons, click on the button, drop the button here. I come inside the view. Now, for to constrain this button, I need to do that. Otherwise, it will jump. It won't know where my button is supposed to be. So what I do is I said, okay, constrain it on the left. But so it moves to the left. So now this button is fixed on the left side. You can do that. You can constrain multiple objects with respect to each other as well. Or you can come here in this attribute window and click on this button. So if I click on this button here, this will basically mean that my constraint is being done on the right side. Now this button is also at the center of the page. Okay. So we have a simple hello world application created. I'm just trying to give a little bit more explanation, but I hope you follow along. So basic activity components, split code window. We create our code attribute window. We create our attribute. Okay. I will explain the process of creating applications more detail. I'm just trying to give an overview of what different applications are allowing us to do. Once we have this thing, now we need to run it. I think uh, not vertically constrained. So see this, there is a red dot here. This indicates that there is still some problem with the layout. If I come into its panel, it gives me an issue error here, not vertically constrained. So basically means that it is on left and right, but it doesn't know where it stands vertically. So I can come here and click on this plus icon. It will vertically constrain this component with its current location. So you can click on these plus icons as well. So if I select this button here, it says not vertically constrained. So let me just move it upwards a little bit and click on this blue button. Once I click on it, it will also do the automatic constraint. So you can drag and drop or you can click on these blue buttons. It will use its current location 201 pixels from its top. It entered that value here that this component needs to be 201 pixels from its top. So it has also now vertically constrained. So you need to provide at least one constraint when you're working with this thing. Hope you follow through. So once this is done, 
Now let's just run this application. In order to run this application, you need something called AVD map. AVD is your mobile device simulator. You need to have that. So if you haven't installed it, you again need to install it. So I come into my AVD manager. It will say that I have already one device available, but you will find that it has something called create virtual device. If you have not installed it, you have a big button. We have to click on create virtual device. Pe click karna hai. As soon as I click on it, a window will pop up that will ask me which mobile device basically you want to use. Okay, so this is like installing a virtual simulator for a particular mobile device. Okay, so for example, I have already installed Pixel 4a. If I need to install Pixel 4a for Excel or for example, Pixel 5, I will select that particular mobile. I will jump this window away, click on the next. As soon as I click on the next, it will say that this particular mobile is supporting all these different versions of your API. It, the least it supports is called 22 Android Lollipop 5.1. Okay. So I need to download it and I need to install it. So you will click on this download button. It will go on the internet. So you again need an internet. Okay. So remember one main thing I had said that when we work with Android Studio, do ensure you have an active internet connection. Most of the time it will try to do something fishy with your internet as well. It will try to download a few files as you go along. So you click on the download button. It will download your required apk uh, api files for that particular version then click on next and it will be installed simple as that so to install this avd this is all you need to do okay so you click on virtual device select a particular phone download api click on next it will install then once it is installed now that mobile phone it should be here all we need to do is click on this play button what this play button will do is that it will take something called gradle building and build our APK file from the source code. Now, Gradle is something that is responsible for compiling your code and taking your code and building an APK file for it. Okay, I hope it explains. Uh, just like a Java compiler or JDK compiler, it will uh, take your code and build an APK file. So basically, your uh, Gradle is responsible for building that. Now, somehow it ran my old application. I think. Uh, I don't want this app or is it still loading? Hmm. Okay. Uh, I think, hang on. I need to do one more thing. Let it close. I need to come back into my code. Or uh, sometimes what we do is I need to clear my settings. Somewhere here is a button. Tha, clear my settings and file. This one. Invalidate cache and restart. Okay. What this will do is it will remove the cache from my previous project and work on the new project. Ah, okay. Maybe I've installed supported. So what I do is I clear this cache uh, and then I can do that, but I noticed the error that installation failed due to sufficient. Uh, so let me just click on this again and let's try to run it one more time before I actually clear the cache. Because I think I closed it too soon, and that's why I was getting an invalid output. So let it wait. It's still installing. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't monitor that. So once I click on the play button, you will notice your emulator should pop up and wait for that installation to complete, and your app will appear. Okay. Previously, I closed it and I didn't wait for it too soon. Okay. So you need to be a um, little bit patient with it and wait for it. Okay, 
Yes, sir, Ari. Sir, so you can see this. Okay, my application.